Here's Broadway Maven co-host Karina Carr. Karina, tell us a little bit about the music of Soliloquy from Carousel. Soliloquy is quite unique in that it is a very lengthy solo. Uh, much, much longer than one person is typically standing on stage singing on their own. Um, but what gets very interesting about it musically is that it takes us on quite a journey. Billy works his way through a number of different thoughts and Rogers did a masterful job of expressing that journey in the music as well. So I'd like to take a look at each of those nine sections and what they tell us about where Billy is in his thought process and what happens musically. Um, so just before this, Billy has found out that he's going to be a father. And as most people do, even if they're planning this and looking forward to it, they experience some worry and some anxiety about the idea of becoming a parent. So that is reflected right off the bat in our music because we are in a minor key. Now, a very quick, simple explanation of the difference between major and minor keys is that major keys tend to be associated with happier, more positive emotions, right? Right, that sounds happy and positive. A minor key tends to be associated with sadness, worry, the more negatives. It is a simple change of one note versus, okay? So we start here in B minor and we have the following. Now, if we had that in a major key, it would sound like this. It's much, it's completely different, right? All of a sudden it sounds happy, right? Like, oh, I'm gonna be a dad, hurrah! But that's not what we get. We have the worry and the anxiety happening here. I wonder what he'll think of me, right? And this carries through as Billy thinks about what this child is going to think of him, specifically what his son will think of him. And as we move to the second section, we have three things that change that lead us into this. And these three things in some combination mark every new section in the music. We see either a change in the tempo, which is the speed of the music, the key, right, major, minor, or we switch from one major key to another, the music gets higher or lower, or we have a change in the time signature, which is how we count it, which can also change how the speed feels, okay? So in this case, all three things change. We move to a major key, which I just gave you a clue, means we've gotten a little happier. We also have a change in the tempo. Originally, we had moderato, which means moderately, in this section, we have allegro, which is fast and lively. And our time signature moves from four, one, two, three, four, to two, one, two, one, two, which again, makes it seem like it's moving along a little faster. And it sounds like this. My boy, Bill, I will see that he's named after me. Right, and we have a sense in this music that there's more levity, there's more happiness, there's some hope here. As Billy moves from thinking about uh, what might be and being worried about what he can offer to thinking about who his son might be, what he's going to look like, how he's going to act. And if you were with me last week, oompa, 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 there it is. And it, com it comes up a few times in this song, but there's the first one that I'll point out. So this carries us through the second section, and we have this more happy feeling in the music underneath. The Broadway Maven is the only free weekly Broadway appreciation course you'll find online. Every week we look at topics as diverse as Wicked, Mel Brooks musicals, and Gershwin on Broadway. When we move to our third thought, this is where Billy starts to think about what his son might do. What's he going to do for a job, right? And we have a couple of changes again. Our tempo now says with movement, right? And our time signature moves to six, eight. So instead of one, two, one, two, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it has more movement. 
And to me, it sounds very determined. I don't give a damn what he does, as long as he does what he likes, right? And to me, Billy is saying that he really is just determined that this son will be happy. And it doesn't matter to him what that son does, as long as he's happy. Or does it matter? We have two changes that happen in this section, where we go from plodding along determinedly to having a significant, what we call a ritardando in music. All that means is slowing down. And that happens for the first time here. Or maybe bark for the carousel. Of course, it takes talent to do that well. When Billy starts talking about the idea of his son doing the thing that he used to do, the thing that he was proud of doing, we have more weight to the line, to the music. This tells us that this is more meaningful to him. More attention is drawn to it. And he lists a few other professions after that. And then he slows down again, one more time. Or president of the United States, that'd be all right too. So musically, we are told that the idea of Billy's son following in his footsteps or being president of the United States are equally meaningful. They have equal attention and weight place on them here. And then we move to our fourth section musically, but take a listen. My boy, Bill, it's actually the second section. And this is the only time that we have a direct repeat of what we had before. So we have nine different sections, but we have seven or eight different um, musical ideas, depending on how you count them. So we have this brief return to picturing what his son will look like and who he will be. And we return to that same uh, musical sound that we had before. And now we move to the fifth section, which to me is musically the most interesting in this entire piece. When I first listened to this, I was trying to count this and figure out the time signature and, and I could not figure it out. And I'm like, is this in three? Is it in four, six? What is happening? I had to get out the score and look at it because we have this sound. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. What is that? <laughs> it's in two. So let me count that for you. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. But it doesn't feel like two. It shifts around. We would expect two to sound like this. One, two, one, two, or one, two, one, two, one, two. But we don't get that. We get this shifting, unsettled, agitated, rhythm. And this is while Billy is talking about the person his son will not marry, that he will be damned if she, if he is going to marry a frigid, cold woman who won't even show him any affection, you know, the boss's daughter. So he's getting quite worked up at this idea of this horrible woman <laughs> that his son will not be with. And the music reflects that. And once again, our tempo tells us with more movement, it's moving a little bit more a little bit faster, right? And to me, that's very interesting because everywhere else we have this very even tempo, this very even counting. And this is so uneven. It just, it doesn't feel good. And Billy doesn't feel good with this idea, right? So then we move into the sixth section where Billy starts to imagine when his son is dating. He's 17 and he's out getting a girl and Billy's gonna help him because he can show him how to do that. So we have a slowing down of the tempo here and we get what is in my opinion, the most relaxed section of this song. It sounds something like this. I can see him when he's 17 or so. It's very even, it's very settled, it's very confident 
because Billy believes in his ability to teach his son how to get a girl. He knows he can do that. So our melody is much more luxurious and melodic. It moves around more because he can just sit back and relax because he knows that this is a thing that he can do. But all of a sudden this brings him to the horrifying realization that his child might be, oh no, a girl. The Broadway Maven's Weekly Blast comes out every Thursday. It contains essays, reviews, YouTube gems, surveys, and more. Okay. And this brings us to section number seven. And when we get here, the idea that the child might be a girl brings back the anxiety and the worry that Billy was feeling at the beginning. And so we have two of the three things from our opening section return exactly. We return to 4-4 four, four time and the instructions actually say original tempo. We are also in a minor key again. We are just in a different minor key, but have a listen. <laughs> This is the same as what we had at the beginning. I wonder what he'll think of me. The only difference here is that Billy speaks most of the melody instead of singing it. And so it goes slightly unnoticed, but the music is telling us that all of that anxiety and worry has returned, which is why I said, it depends how you count it. You could say that section seven is the same as section one, but they're a little different. So you can count them differently as well. So now as he starts to move to thinking, I don't have any idea how to care for a girl. I don't know how to do that. Then he starts to think about what she might be like. And again, as happened when he thought about his son, that brings a little bit of confidence back and a little bit more levity. And he, for the first time, mentions the mother of this child. And he starts to imagine that his daughter might be like her mother. And in section number eight, we get the first hint of Julie's influence musically. So this section, it tells us to play broader and with warmth. So it sounds like this. My little girl. Pink and white as peaches and cream is she. It slows down and, to me, and it is, it is warmer. And to me, that shows us the care and the warmth that Billy would have for his daughter. It's expressed musically. But what's really interesting in this section is actually the next line. We have the following. My little girl is half again as bright. That rhythm, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. That's what we call a dotted rhythm. So it could have sounded like this. Ba, 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 ba. Even eighth notes here. But instead we get ba, 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 ba. Which is a rhythm throughout the show that is associated with Julie. If we go all the way back to the opening scene with uh, Julie and Carrie, sorry, there's the carousel scene before, but their opening scene together, we have um, Carrie sings, you are quieter and deeper than a well. And Julie returns that melody, but changes the rhythm. There's nothing that I care to choose to tell. Ba, 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 ba from Carrie, ba, 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 from Julie. This tells us that Carrie is the stable one. She craves stability. She has these straight, even rhythms. But Julie, she follows her heart over her head. There's more freedom in her rhythms. And Billy returns that exact same melody when he whistles to her during the bench scene, and he whistles Julie's rhythm, ba, 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 ba aligning himself with her, both character-wise, but also musically. So in this eighth section of soliloquy, we have those dotted rhythms. Half again as bright as girls are meant to be. All these dotted rhythms showing Julie's influence 
on Billy here as he thinks about his daughter. So moving into our ninth section, we again have a change in the key signature, the time signature and the tempo. All three things change as we bring this home on this very long journey that Billy has gone through. And the accompaniment sounds something like this. Right, this is urgent. This is unsettled. There is perpetual motion here. And this is where Billy is saying, I've got to get ready before she comes. I don't have a lot of time. I have to get this sorted out. I have to do it now. There is urgency in the accompaniment underneath what he is singing, telling us how he feels. And then we get to the final few lines. And I think this is a very clever choice and very deliberate choice that Rogers made here. And we have to first understand what a baritone is. So we have in the male voices, typically tenors are the highest, baritones are in the middle, basses are the lowest. So a baritone is not as high as a tenor, not as low as a bass. And this song comfortably sits in the middle range of a baritone. Typically a baritone is defined as singing as high as an E. This E that I'm playing right here, but at the end of this song, Billy has to sing money, an F, one note higher. Money, but I'll try, by God, I'll try. I'll go out and make it or steal it and higher. He goes up to the G, which is another two notes higher. He doesn't just sing that F one time. It's something like 16 times in a row at the end of this song. And then the longest note in the song is that high F. And I believe that what Rogers was telling us here is that Billy is literally outside of his range. He is willing to put this massive Herculean effort into caring for this child. He will do whatever he can for better or for worse, as we then learn later in the show. And immediately after this is when he makes his fateful choice. Um, and so I think that, that was a very deliberate decision from Rogers to repeatedly have this note that really is just a little too high, uh, make him work just a little too hard and push his boundaries. So that is how Rogers music supports the journey that Billy goes on emotionally in soliloquy. Please like and subscribe. And here's a Piano Talks playlist.